friends. Today we're going to read this story. It is called Thunder Boomer and this story is written by Shutta Crum and illustrated by Carol Thompson. We're going to go ahead and start. The day is hot. Dad plows his tractor glinting in the sun. Tom slaps his feet against the surface of the pond. I sprawl in the shade of the chestnut tree. Scooter pants with his tongue hanging out. Mother comes down the path to settle on the dock. I hope this heat breaks soon, she says. We need a thunder boomer. Suddenly, there's a soft touch tease. A leaf tips over, and then another. Mmm, feel that breeze, says Tom. Scrambling to my feet, I stretch my arms and try to catch each welcome gust of wind. But then, the air turns chilly. Dark clouds hide the sun. The wind stirs up the pond and rustles through the corn. Mother looks around and says, it's time to head on back. A storm is on the way. We scurry home across the fields. Dad drives the tractor in and slides the barn door shut. Tom runs and flaps his arms to coop the squawking chickens while Mother and I race to yank the laundry from the line. Scooter follows. He wants to play. Scooter the dog says, ruff, ruff, ruff. Jumping high, he snatches something white. Stop that, Scooter, drop it, I yell. And for once, he listens. Not you, you don't need to drop it. Then suddenly, a lightning flash, and the wind steals away his prize. Let it go, Mother shouts and grabs the laundry basket. Scooter stealing things from the laundry line. Thunder rumbles all around. We run up on the porch and Tom and Scooter join us. The last one in is Dad. He bounds across the yard just as the clouds crack open. Then, as if someone's turned a faucet on, the rain comes gushing down and down and down. There's everyone running inside. Something flutters by the shed. I squint into the rain. It's Maisie, my favorite yeah. chicken. She's caught out in the storm. Dad sighs and jams his hat on tight. He dashes into the downpour, jumping over puddles. Scooter barks and tags along. They're off to rescue Maisie. Dad bends to scoop her up. She bonks and pecks him. What's wrong? That's not like her at all. As soon as they return, Mother herds us all inside. Dad is drenched. From draggled hat to soggy shoes, he slips and squishes by, carrying grumpy Maisie. Scooter's claws click clack until he gets his footing. Then starting from his drippy head, he twists and shakes and spatters us with rain. Dad puts Maisie down and she stalks across the floor, complaining with each haughty step. Mother sops up puddles while Tom and I rush room to room, slamming the window shut. Boom, boom, crack, rumble, rum, rum. There's another bolt of lightning, and when the thunder follows, it makes the whole house shake. Scooter's scared. He hides his head beneath the couch but the rest of him won't fit. A thunder boomer's here. 
gusting rain pelts the roof. The maple's branches brush and whump against the walls. Then something white goes whipping past the window through the air. Dad's underwear! Tom and I start laughing, and when we finally stop, we hear a pinging sound. Oh no, Dad mutters. Hail, and he slumps into his chair. Hail could shred the corn's green leaves. It could dent our metal roofs. Scooter whines. He doesn't like the noise. I put my arms around him and stroke his quivering side. Shh, it's all right, I tell him. That's just the thunder boomer showing off. Then the hail comes clinking down, ringing harder, louder, faster. Just when I think it will never end, there's a sudden hush. No one speaks. The wind has stopped and the branches of the maple have finally settled down. The only thing I hear is a single little sound. Ping. Scooter pulls his head out. <laughs> See, it's over, boy, I say. That mean old storm is gone. Suddenly, Maisie flutters from Dad's chair, where she's been sulking for a while. She marches through the kitchen straight up to the door. Scooter scrambles after her. They both want out right now. We go outside to a world that's wet and deeply green. The puddles in the yard are full of floating hail and leaves. Our metal roofs are dimpled, just a little bit. And the corn is leaning, but not ruined. Scooter sniffs and noses around, his tail high in the air. He hauls up something soggy and drags it through the mud. It's Dad's underwear. Dad chases after Scooter. Hey, come back! Tom and Mom join in. But I am watching Maisie as she clucks around the shed. She peeks and pokes and bobs her head. What is she searching for? Why has she been so grouchy? Suddenly, she ruffs her feathers. What has she found? Maisie! Squawk, squawk, squawk. Maisie shelters something small, something wet. I reach beneath her wing. Look, it's a kitten, all soaked and shivery from the storm. I hold him close. I stroke his rain-slicked fur. He licks my thumb and rumbles. The kitten's purring sounds like a rumbling storm. Well, Dad says, the storm has left us a gift. May we keep him, please, I ask. We could name him Stormy. No, says Tom, he should be Thor, the mighty god of thunder. Mother says, he needs a name. She looks Dad in the eye. Dad shakes his head and sighs. Okay, we'll keep this gift. Just listen to that thunderous purr. And then I say, I know the perfect name. Let's call him Thunder Boomer. Now the air smells sweet as butter. Everything's washed clean. The puddles have dried up. The clouds have traveled on. And all I hear are quiet evening sounds. The call of owls beyond the pond, the chuff of toads in mother's garden, and the low and sleepy rumble of a tired thunder boomer. Now this story was really great for visualizing. And if you're in my class, you know that visualizing 
means the story gives you a lot of describing words or adjectives that tell you about what's happening and it gives you a really good picture in your brain. So even though there are some great pictures in this story, I can picture what's happening in my brain because of the describing words. There's also a simile on that very last page. Now the air smells sweet as butter. Similes, if you remember, are when we compare two things using the words like or as, and that uses the word as. Sweet as butter. There may have been some others in here too with all those great describing words. All right, once more, the author of this story is Shutta Crum, S-H-U-T-T-A, C-R-U-M, Thunder Boomer. Thanks for listening.